Hello, good afternoon. Um, it is the uh, fourth episode of uh, Airborne on Air, and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Marcus Kramer, CTO of uh, Airborne, and today we have uh, Regis uh, Voya of uh, Bcomp in our webinar. So that's very exciting. Uh, and maybe the people who have watched us uh, uh, more often, I have a new background, and that's because today is International Earth Day. And uh, so we can all think about sustainability and how to save the earth. And topic of today in natural fibers is, I think, very um, a very good fit. Uh, one technical point in the bottom, there's a chat function, which you can use to introduce yourself and your company. And if you do so, it's important to use the uh, drop down um, box to select uh, that you send a message to all attendees and panelists. Sometimes I said that doesn't go well. So Regis, um, uh, I can see your screen, you're not uh, visible by video yet. Uh, welcome uh, very much. Um, yes, there you are, very good. Hello. Uh, all the way from Switzerland. Uh, so we're very happy to have you here. The background, we all, the background we already see the natural fibers, so um, maybe you can shortly introduce yourself and, uh, and, and what you do at uh, Bcomp. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, so thank you for inviting me uh, to this webinar and giving me the opportunity to present natural fiber composites uh, to this community. So as you said, my name is Regis Voya. I am a, an R&D engineer at Bcomp. Uh, I have been involved since 2017 full-time. And uh, now I uh, manage the, all R&D activities in the, related to thermosets as well as sustainability. Okay, very good. Uh, and to kickstart, we have a small poll uh, about the kind of materials you use. So we, we want to ask the audience to uh, think of uh, what they think uh, of what kind of materials you use. So here is the poll. So what kind of biological materials does BCOMP use? Uh, natural fibers? Fibers made from a biological source, so that's a bit of a trick question. That's not the same as natural fibers. And natural fibers and some biobased resins, or only 100% natural fibers in everything you do. So now you can submit your vote, and then uh, we'll see what happens. And in a moment, we will see the results, and then, uh, Regis, you can reflect on these results, uh, hopefully. We can even participate. <laughs> Here we have it. Um, ah, nobody uh, was fooled by the trick question. So uh, that's a shame. <laughs> Regis, maybe you can comment. Uh, what kind of materials do you use? So, um, yeah, we, we use uh, fibers made from biological sources, actually. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it, it depends. Uh, it really depends on what you're looking at. So, so, so bacon. Actually, I think the right answer is indeed natural fibers and some bio-based resins. Um, Bacon is, uh, above all, um, a uh, natural fiber reinforcement supplier. Uh, we're not uh, per se a resin supplier, but we do our best um, to, to find uh, and adapt bio resin solutions for our materials. And this is a big part of the R&D that we conduct. Um, yeah. So do you, do you sell materials or do you make parts? Or both. So we sell materials. We, we're a material supplier, uh, semi-finished products as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, I know you prepared a presentation, so maybe it's now a good time to, uh, to start and uh, present uh, what you do at Bcomp. All right, so if I do this... Do you see my presentation? Yes, we see it full screen. Yeah. Okay, so I introduced myself already. I'll try to be uh, efficient. I know I don't have uh, much time, even though I have a lot that I would like to share. Before we go, I go into uh, the technologies uh, that Bcomp uh, provides. Um, I would like to quickly take a step back and think and reflect on what makes uh, flax fibers in particular, because this is the main uh, product that we that we use. Um, so interesting in terms, not just in terms of composites, but also in terms of sustainability. So flax is grown from photosynthesis, which is the, um, uh, the process of transforming CO2 into polysaccharides, technically speaking, so cellulose, hemicellulose, etc. And by doing so, they, they transform the CO2 uh, and sequestrate 1.6 times their own weight 
uh, into these very stiff, tough and lightweight materials. Uh, so this is powerful because it, it means that CO2 is not just sequestrated as a, as a, you know, as a side uh, effect, but it's the main uh, resource for producing the fibers themselves. Um, this process is, as I said, via photosynthesis uh, using sunlight energy. And this energy is for the most part stored uh, and embodied in the material itself. And it can be efficiently recovered at the end of life through incineration. Uh, this is the, the exact same concept that uh, why um, wood is a sustainable heat source. Um, um, other reasons why flax, uh, as a natural materials, as we know, natural materials not don't don't all come um, with with the nicest impact on the environment. In certain cases, agriculture can be can be harmful. In the case of flax, and in particular the flax that decomposes. Uh, the fibers are extracted using a process called dew retting, um, which is as opposed to water retting, the, the action of letting fungi and, um, and uh, microorganisms digest at the lignin uh, around the fibers to allow it to extract them. Um, the flax is grown in Europe and with minimal need for irrigation and fertilizers, also in part thanks to the dew retting process. All right, so what does Bacon provide exactly? Well, here's a, 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 an overview uh, of some of the, the, the type of fiber reinforcements. Uh, the, the, the goal is, is of Amplitex, which we call the, this uh, product range, is to cover most needs um, uh, for, com for the composite industry, but uh, also specific ones can be addressed uh, via custom, custom weaves, um, depending on, on our customer needs. Um, one of our products hybridizes uh, carbon and flax when that's required. Of course, um, uh, uh, most of our products are primarily uh, flax fiber based. Uh, our flagship uh, technology, uh, which is patented, is called the Paribs. And uh, it's what you see on the right here. This is the um, localized reinforcement uh, surface rib. Um, so the, the concept of ribbing is not new to Becomp, uh, from Becomp, but uh, the technology to, to introduce this efficiently in the composite laminate is. Um, uh, and bef without going into the details uh, of how this works, just to give an intuitive sense here on the, on the left here is the, the image of a, of a leaf using the same concept to, to stiffen itself. Um, and uh, so this is an example of biomimicry in this case. A combination of Amplitex and Paribs can provide uh, the same performance, meaning the same stiffness uh, in flexure uh, for the same weight as a full uh, carbon fiber reinforced uh, um, composite for, for thin shells, for example, in the, the case of a cow uh, model, model sports uh, bodywork. Um, here on the left, you see a picture of uh, Landon Norris looking at his uh, new seat for the McLaren F1 uh, team. Uh, he wrote, he raced uh, pretty successfully actually if you, if you follow if you've been following McLaren uh, on the F1 track um, uh, he's been riding this for for um, for this year for this season uh, Bacon, uh, sorry Amplitex and Paribs are uh, since uh, 2021 part of the solar impulse efficient solution um, so the main markets for uh, our products uh, the first, historically, the first market for Big Comp is sports and leisure. Uh, this is close to the heart of the founders of the company who started making skis. Uh, quickly spread to uh, surfboards, uh, even guitars. And there's many, again, many other uh, examples of this that you can follow on our website. Um, model sports, again, there is a very strong pull from this market, uh, in part thanks to the Paribs uh, and Amplitex technologies. Here is, again, um, the McLaren F1 uh, seat next to the original uh, uh, carbon fiber um, um, part. Uh, and on the left, a Tesla GT uh, bodywork. Um, natural fiber composites are interesting uh, also thanks to their crash behavior. So not only are they uh, validated for uh, uh, energy absor absorption, as you can see uh, on the video here, uh, made in co collaboration with Wycom. Um, sorry, see that again. Whoop, how does that work? Okay. Um, but as you can see, also the, the crash behavior, um, the, the, um, 
uh, the failure uh, behavior is different than with uh, carbon fiber composites. Uh, the debris is much less sharp and, and um, provides a, a safer environment on the track for, for um, race cars. Uh, and on the right, there is the, an example of a bodywork uh, from the um, uh, Extreme E um, series. Marine and infrastructure are part of our markets. Uh, on the left here, uh, the, the uh, Flax 27 uh, sailing boat from Green Boats. And on the right, this is uh, um, an actual uh, bridge on, on top of a canal in the Netherlands. Uh, it's a bicycle bridge. And this one can, um, can open to leave to let uh, boats go through. Um, and uh, yeah, this was made entirely out of uh, Antitex. Uh, last but not least, uh, Paycom solutions have been validated at uh, technology readiness level six for uh, low Earth orbit um, applications. So this is a demonstrator that was done um, on a joint project with the European Space Agency. Um, um, we've demonstrated several things. Uh, the simple fact that these materials can, can be used is already covering a lot of um, checks um, and requirements in terms of stiffness, outgassing, uh, temperature resistance and endurance and cycling, etc. cetera. Um, we've also demonstrated a very low uh, coefficient of thermal expansion, uh, which makes it compatible with carbon really well in that, in that sense. The fatigue life is actually one order of magnitude higher than GFRP at equivalent stress level compared to the ultimate strength. Um, they provide an interesting behavior in, in, the, in re entry uh, demisability. This is a topic that's specific to the space industry, but basically they, they demise very quickly uh, compared to carbon fiber um, upon re entry, which makes it saf safer for uh, the ground um, facilities and, and, and uh, people. Uh, the, the radio transparency is very high, actually, um, almost. Uh, zero absorption peaks uh, across the whole range up to the uh, 40 gigahertz uh, range. So that covers everything from, uh, of course, FM, FM waves, um, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, and all, uh, and all the, the radio bands up to the KA one. Uh, vibration damping is a big topic and, and uh, has a, uh, we, we've known this for a long time, but this was demonstrated again. Uh, the viscoelastic behavior um, is very, efficient at uh, dissipating vibrations. All right, well, um, oh, sorry, last but not least, um, last scale mobility. Um, so with thermoplastic solution, we can uh, provide a uh, solution for auto interior and the Polestar um, is, uh, uh, was a big announcement uh, recently uh, that uh, we are collaborating with them for the new electric vehicle. Okay, and on that note, I think, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you covered a lot of topics, so it's, I think, very impressive to see where, where natural fiber composites can already be used, even uh, in space. So uh, we, we make space uh, products ourselves at Airmo, so we know how challenging that can be. Um, I, I had a couple of thoughts. Uh, so one is um, the processes that you need to use to, to use your materials. Are they just the same as in normal composite manufacturing or are there differences? Uh, and I, th I was especially thinking also about automated processes, if that's mm -hmm. just the same or there are things that you need to uh, take account from. So essentially they're the same. And this is what we're really uh, thriving for is, is not to disturb too much uh, the industry with new products that require uh, completely new technology to, to work with. Uh, the idea that they can replace uh, it, this replacement from carbon or glass fibers to natural fibers is straightforward. And this is what the Amplitex range uh, is doing. Um, also in terms of design, uh, when it comes to the paribs, uh, these actually can make uh, processing easier in, in some cases. The paribs uh, act as a, a flow media on the surface. So for infusion, this removes the, the need for an actual flow media that, that ends up as waste, uh, also waste resin uh, associated. Uh, but of course, the paribs require uh, always a semi-rigid mold process, so that makes it perhaps uh, more challenging for um, for RTM or compression molding, etc. But this is what we're working on to to address. And if you use it in uh, 
autoclave processes is that also straightforward or absolutely yeah. and, and and actually so so uh, we we provide preprec solutions and the parids uh, work in autoclave has been demonstrated actually the, the these are uh, pretty much all the the thermal set parts of shown for motorsports are made in autoclave as yeah. well as the the demonstrator for the european space agency I have a question in the um, in the Q and A. Somebody asked, "What kind of resins you normally use, and is it recyclable your material?" So um, again, uh, this is this is down to the choice of our customers, really, because we mostly provide the the, the dry fabrics. Uh, when it comes to the prepack solutions that we uh, provide with partners, usually this is composites. Um, so, uh, sorry, uh, epoxy um, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, epoxy works really well um, in, in this case. Um, we are again uh, looking hard to, to find uh, um, bio-based uh, resin solutions. Um, uh, and, th and there are some, and, and, and there is a, a lot of developments uh, in this case. And are you also looking into um, thermoplastics? Uh, yeah, actually, so, so this is our main uh, point of um, development for the large scale automotive industry. So, so um, we are also uh, adapting the Paribs technology to, to uh, thermoplastics. Um, um, and this is, uh, this is the, the product uh, that, that we are actually uh, starting to produce uh, in-house uh, here in Switzerland. Ah, okay, cool. And uh, one thing that comes up frequently, I also saw a question in the Q&A, is, uh, yeah, it's a natural fiber. So uh, depending on the season and, and, and everything, there will be variations in quality. How do you deal with that? Of course, uh, and this is uh, one of the challenges that need to, to be addressed, and this is what we, we work on. And, and, and uh, so the solution for natural fibers uh, to address the seasonal changes is, is to do uh, batch mixing. So basically the, the fibers are stored for uh, stored and, and mixed uh, over uh, three to four years to achieve a very consistent um, properties on, on all our products. And the properties are consistently checked for, for quality, of course. Okay. Uh, okay, so you mix and then you, you keep it uh, constant. Um, I saw another question from uh, Nicolas Avril, uh, my former colleague. Hi, Nicolas. Uh, what about water absorption? Um, and I think moisture is a, a question that typically comes up. So how do you deal with moisture? So, so this is a very interesting topic, of course, and one that, that, uh, that, uh, f f on which I've been working very hard on. So uh, flax is more hygroscopic than most uh, synthetic fibers. Um, uh, this is not necessarily an issue. Uh, first of all, in, in a lot of cases, it doesn't cause any problem. Um, when it does, it's because, the, for example, the, the resin is not very compatible with the presence of moisture. In this case, it's pretty straightforward to, to dry the fabrics um, before you, you mix them. Um, and uh, and uh, as, as, as far as the, the composite uh, resistance to moisture, well, this, can be, this can be addressed with uh, coatings as you would, you know, any metal solution, for example, uh, to protect against corrosion, or you would protect the composite with um, uh, paintings or, or uh, surface layers, uh, thin glass fleece, etc. Yeah. Um, and this is demonstra demonstrably efficient, uh, also in the marine marine environment. And, and yeah, I saw both. So then uh, you need to solve this uh, problem. And I can imagine that, uh, for example, polypropylene as a thermoplastic is, is, is typically a good barrier against moisture. So I guess that's an also an advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's um, go to the next poll. Um, Lara, can you pull it up? And then we can have some questions for the audience. So the first one is uh, more on sustainability. How can we make composites having the least CO2 emissions? Difficult question. <laughs> so the, the first is both resin and fiber should be non-fossil based. So bio-based or recycled materials. So no fossil um, polymers, let's say, and fibers. The second answer is uh, use only natural grown materials. Third, use minimum energy in processing. And the third is increase lifetime and recycle. Uh, to just have less products that we need. The th second question is, uh, what are the challenges for natural fiber composites? Strength or stiffness, moisture, you talked a little bit about this already. Availability of materials, since it's a natural uh, fiber, and constant quality. So now the, um, the audience can uh, submit their uh, answers. 
and then uh, we'll see the results. I also voted myself now, so that's good. Mm. And uh, let's see uh, what the answers are. Um, bit mixed, the first question uh, in the results. So, Regis, can you mm -hmm. comment on this? Well, this is interesting. So, so regarding the first question, um, I think I think the first one generally um, is is a, a very good approach um, because increasing lifetime and, and recycle. Um, so, in general, increasing lifetime um, is always a, a good thing, right? Uh, it's always the same uh, reuse. Um, um, the, the the four R's. Um, recycling recycling is is a tricky one. Recycling uh, can uh, of of course uh, be a much much better option than just landfilling. But recycling composites requires a lot of energy, uh, and is not necessarily economically viable. It really and again it really depends. Yeah. So um, and, and recycling in most cases for composites uh, um, consists of downcycling really. So so for a fully circular solution, I think. I think in this particular case of a fully circular solution, both resin and fibers can be non fossil based and then they can go through a waste to energy recovery through incineration. Yeah. Um, and, and the CO2 cycle is, is part of a closed loop that doesn't rely on fossil resources. And, and, and in your, um, we talked about this before a little bit, the, uh, if, if you look to your natural fibers, I think uh, if the fiber is grown, CO2 is captured. And if you then look to the product that's made, is that a carbon negative product then, or is it still positive? No, so, so that's a good question. Um, it again depends, and it depends on um, how much, uh, how the processes, uh, what the processes were used, and, um, and uh, what type of ma matrix is used, etc. An interesting fact about Amplitex uh, as a dry product, um, when it comes to the gate, uh, it is actually neutral and, and, and even, uh, you know, strangely so like, like uh, it's almost a coincidence that uh, the, the offset from CO2 sequestration is pretty much equal to the offset from processing from fibers to the product. Uh, but at this stage, you're only at the, at the you know, the roll. Um, you, you don't have a composite solution ready yet, so you need to introduce resin processing, etc. Um, so until we make the resins and the processing incredibly efficient uh, and the energies, of course, the energy mix, um, we won't get a fully neutral uh, solution, uh, okay. but, but the fibers are addressing. Okay, so, so less energy is really important uh, if for all of us to think about that in processing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the second question, I think we touched the about most of this already. Um, looking at the time, uh, maybe we can, can move forward. Um, so we have some people that can ask questions. Um, and the first one uh, is, I saw it, is Andrew from uh, the NCC. Is an, uh, Andrew in the, in the webinar? Yes, Andrew Limek. Um, so maybe you can switch on your microphone and your video and you can ask a question to Regis. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Hi, it's Andy Limack here from the National Health Center. Hello. Hi. Um, I had a question um, about the matrix. So we've got obviously great progress in, in the reinforcements and the cores and for natural fibers. Um, but I'm curious as to where you feel we stand now in, in the matrix, you know, in terms of availability, performance, and just how sustainable they are, and where 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 are they in, in the life cycle um, assessment of you know of more naturally sourced resin materials mm -hmm. or uh, bio yeah. resin materials? Uh, this is this is a key question that uh, I'm 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 honestly sad that I don't have much more time to discuss because it's a complex one. Uh, availability at the moment is is clearly uh, a big a big a big trouble. Um, there is health and safety. There is uh, so many aspects to this. Um, I think the, the, in general, from my experience, the, the resin industry is working hard on, on increasing the bio credentials of, of their products, which is always a good thing. A good thing. Um, there's also uh, alternative matrices to uh, the regular, you know, epoxies, polyesters, and, and polypropylene that we always, uh, or, or there's others, but uh, 
Uh, an example is PFA, for example. So it's a, it's a byproduct yeah. um, of uh, biogas production that is fully biobased uh, and also fire retardant. So so there's it's just basically to a very complex subject. Uh, but I think the, the entire industry is aware of it and, and working in the right direction. Are you working on that at NCC, uh, Andrew, to solve this question? Uh, um. We are, yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's become, become quite a, a prominent subject. I mean, it, it's it's an, it's another hurdle to tackle. Um, the PFA resins, yes, we are very aware of them. You know, yeah, we've, we've got experience with them. I mean, there's a there's a number of sources of them now, and the it, I think the it being 99.9 percent .9 bio derived and, and the fire credentials are, are excellent in there. Yeah, but it's. Um, but it's yeah, it's it's where we go in terms of um, the being able to whether they whether these products are recyclable, whether they're reusable. What how do we get rid of them? You know, there's there's a whole life cycle question. You know, when you've got when you've got something which is you know a cross linked matrix and, mm -hmm. and where does all that fit in? So, and, yeah. and that that alone, uh, you know, uh, uh, plays into the complexity of the subjects. Is what are we looking at? Are we looking at incineration, or recycling, recovery, and uh, they, they they all come with very different uh, answers. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the whole the whole life cycle has to be considered yes. for any of this. Um, okay. Good. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, thank thank you. you for your question, and, uh, and good that you could join. Uh, we go to the next person who will ask a question live. Thank you. We, we have uh, Matthijs uh, Lansu from Ashland, and uh, Matthijs has also a question. Um, is Matthijs in the... Yes, there's Matthijs. So I just got promoted to a panelist. Okay, nice. Awesome. Yeah, hi. Hi, hi I just... Hi. I was, uh, I was wondering, uh, I have a bit of a background in thermoplastics. I'm in cosmetics right now, but... Uh, purely here for personal interest uh how, like especially with thermoplastics like uh using uh impregnation of your of your fiber is, is is key to mechanical strength and i was wondering uh uh how do you uh do that with uh with, with your uh weaves so um yeah, thermoplastics is an, an interesting uh, subject. There is processing temperature that, that, that also plays into it. Um, natural fibers are, are limited in terms of processing temperatures compared to glass, for example, or, or carbon. Um, so, so we are working also with partners on, on the, um, developing a tailored solution for, for um, uh, natural fibers also. So in terms of viscosity, processing temperatures, but also in terms of adhesion. Uh, because the natural fibers are in, inherently very good at adhering to thermosets because of, of their chemical structure. Uh, they're also on the flip side, uh, uh, not so good for, for uh, uh, thermoplastics until we, you know, we, we address this issue. Uh, okay. Okay, good. Thank you, Matthijs. And uh, yeah, I, I hear you, you were in composites, not anymore, so you need to come back. That's yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then, then we have a third question that is uh, pre-recorded from the previous webinar from Yannick Willemin uh, of 9T Labs. Um, so here is the question in the recording. Thanks uh, to them for pushing so hard to prove the, the benefits of using those natural fibers in many different applications. Is uh, that uh, a good um, prolongation of Kunal's question? Because those guys are really doing it at uh, BCom. And my point was, um, what is uh, your opinion or their opinion about alternative and natural source carbon fibers? Basically, uh, part of the pitch is that carbon fibers are not green. So um, what about those uh, bio-based or bio-sourced carbon fibers, which there is quite some projects ongoing now. Mm -hmm. so do you see them as complementary or competitors? So um, in general, I, I welcome uh, all and any initiative to... to Thanks to, uh, to them for pushing... Oh. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize this was a recording issue. I thought I was into <laughs> history live. I'll, I'll pretend like I, like I am. Um, so again, uh, in general, I, I really welcome and, and encourage any initiative to improve the, the bio-credentials and, and reduce, you know, the, uh, improve the efficiency of the materials. 
Um, in my opinion, carbon fibers uh, sourcing is not the main the main reason why they they're not a sustainable uh, material at the moment. I think it mostly has to do with process energy for transforming these raw materials into uh, a very performant fiber, and this is not really addressed by by switching to um, a bio based product. Um, yeah. So this would mostly be addressed uh, at at a you know at a higher level uh, when we address the the question of how we produce our electricity. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It, it takes a lot of energy to uh, to manufacture carbon fiber. Okay. Yeah. So we're already over time. So uh, we need to wrap up. Um, so thank you very much, Regis, um, for this interesting talk. There were a lot of questions in the Q and A. So uh, for the people. Uh, the, the questions that we didn't answer, I'll forward it to Regis and maybe he can answer it uh, offline. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, there's also the next webinar coming up um, and that's the uh, need to look. Uh, it's not on the screen, so maybe you can put it up, Laura, the next webinar. It's on the 20th of May. Uh, and that's a live ASP from uh, Chalmers University in uh, Sweden. And he will talk about uh, composites as a battery. So storing electrons in the carbon fiber, which sounds also very exciting to me. And um, so Regis, the, the, now the floor is yours. Uh, what kind of question do you have for, uh, for our next uh, speaker? Okay, so for, for Professor Leipas, um, my question is related, but not uh, perhaps not uh, the most targeted. But uh, I was wondering, uh, how do you see solid state batteries make it uh, make a breakthrough into the large scale automotive? Um, what your opinion on solid state ba batteries uh, future is? And, and if you think uh, they might, uh, are you considering adapting your technology for, for them? Okay, very good. Okay, I'm sure you will have a great answer. So that, that's uh, that's on 20th of May. And um, yeah, for now, Rajis, thank you very much. Uh, we had a good attendee uh, upcoming, uh, so uh, that, that's very nice. And uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, inform us about uh, the natural fiber uh, story. Thank you very much. Thank you again. See you next uh, time. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I hope you found this uh, instructive. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Okay, thank you. Thank you.